If you don't have time to spend hours editing your podcast and hiring a dedicated editor is just too expensive, you're not alone. But you also don't need to compromise on the quality of your show. In this video, I'm going to show you the podcast editor I use every week to get my video podcast from recording to published in under 60 seconds. How it can turn hours of work into just minutes. Now I'm going to go back and explain all the details, but I'm going to start a timer right here for 60 seconds and let's see if I can actually get my podcast completely edited that fast. All right, here's a recent episode of the video podcast. I'm going to click create and then edit. And now let's start the timer. All right, I'm going to brand my video podcast by clicking apply brand. Then I'm going to go up to the AI producer. I'm going to remove pauses. I like setting this pace, remove filler words, and I like applying smart mute. That mutes people's tracks when they're not talking. Then I'll go here and check the beginning. And I think that endpoint is ready to go. And I just need to find the end where I say next time. And I can search the transcript that quickly. This is actually the end of the episode. I'm just going to split the track right here, click delete on this section, and I'm pretty much done. Now I can export it, go up to 4K quality, export this video, and I have my full podcast episode with the in and out points already done. No filler words, no silences, and I'm pretty sure I beat the clock. Now it'll take a few minutes to export, and then I can download and upload it to YouTube and Spotify, but that is literally my process every week. And having all those AI tools available is the only way that we could regularly publish an over hour long episode every week consistently for the past year and a half. And we've now reached two and a half thousand subscribers. And this is just on YouTube with over 365,000 views. And that same podcast has well over 300,000 audio downloads, and it's in the top 20 of Apple podcast tech shows regularly. Now, if you want to see that video that I just exported from Riverside, exactly how it comes, you can go to our podcast channel and this is exactly what you would see. That's clicking just those few buttons in the Riverside editor and publishing it here on YouTube. What you would see right here on YouTube is exactly what I got from the Riverside editor. Now, before going into the nuts and bolts of how to edit with Riverside, two quick points that do make it possible for us to really limit the amount of editing we're doing. Number one is good planning. Me and my co-host plan every episode. We have a shared Notion document here that we use and we put all the topics we're gonna talk about, any transitions or who might be focusing on a topic, we'll put here in the show notes and any segments like we have personal tech and bonus content that we record every week. It's all planned out here before we hit record. And all the topics we talk about, I actually save all those tabs and open them here in a web browser. And then I'll share my screen as we're recording. And when I share my screen while we record, it gets put together automatically in the editor. I didn't have to touch this part in the editor. Any screen shares that I did during recording automatically show up here in the final video. I'll show you what that looks like in Riverside in just a moment. So planning well, having your episode laid out, good communication with your co-hosts or guests, any screen shares and visuals already prepared before you record, and the other big aspect is consistency and practice. As you can see, we post new episodes every week and I've been podcasting for 15 years. Podcast for a long time and you'll be used to talking without making very many mistakes, using filler words or having long silences. And as you podcast regularly, record often, then you'll get better and you'll require even less and less editing. But Riverside can help even right now from the very beginning. So first, I'll show you how I record my podcast with the edit in mind. I'll go to record here in the Riverside studio. I choose my camera, microphone, and speaker, whether or not I'm using headphones. And I do wear headphones when I record with Riverside. You can actually see me wearing them. They're pretty discreet in-ear headphones. I'll link them down in the video description if you're interested in picking up an inexpensive but high quality pair. Then once I join the Riverside studio, my co-host will show up. I just send them this guest link and it's the same guest link every time. So I just have this in a repeating calendar event and he joins me at our scheduled recording time. And once we go through the run of show just a little bit, I just hit the big record button. And whenever I share my screen, just by going to the share screen option here, sharing the screen and all those tabs that I had open in a web browser, those will show up here in the Riverside studio. Both me and my co-host can see it and we're still being recorded picture in picture. And if I was live streaming, which you can do completely for free with Riverside, even to multiple destinations, I can add those accounts here like Twitch and YouTube. Your screen shares and picture in picture video is live streamed as well. But as I share my screen, as we record and talk, those visuals are then done for me and I don't have to add them in the editor. Though if you want, we have video overlay, text overlay and image overlay tools that you can do after you record. Now, once we're done recording, I'm gonna go back to my Riverside dashboard. Now here you see all the past episodes we've recorded and I'm gonna jump into that episode that I was just showing you. Here on the dashboard, you have access to the full high quality recording files. If you wanna download the video or audio for each guest and all those screen shares I just talked about, you can download a high quality version of each one of those as well. But I'm gonna to go to the made for you tab and here we actually have a magic episode ready for you. 
with removed silences and filler words, that means you can get your episode out even faster than I did before. But let's start from scratch so I can show you all the tools. I'll go up to Create and then go to Edit. Now, the first thing I did here in the editor was go up to the AI producer, and this is where it has a ton of tools to save you hours of editing time. The Remove Pauses is especially helpful. Any silences are completely cut out, and you can adjust the pace. So if you're doing short form reels, I would make the pace super fast, or you can leave it here for your full-length episodes. That's what I do. You can remove all the filler words across all your guests with just a click. And we even have a Find Fluff feature that will analyze and see if there's any segments that were kind of small talk or off topic, and Riverside can suggest you remove those. Magic Audio can apply AI processing to remove background noise, echo, and make even a built-in mic sound studio quality. That would be great if you had like a guest that just used their built-in laptop mic. I apply Smart Mute, and I'll show you what that looks like in our multi-track editor in a moment. And one thing I don't apply, but you could use, especially if you're doing interview style content, is Smart Layouts. That's gonna switch between the active speaker and then show everyone on screen in those in-between moments of the conversation. I'll show you what that looks like. And you can even fix eye contact now using AI in Riverside. Now that we applied those AI tools, the Smart Layouts feature, you can see here in action, It'll show me and my co-host on screen. And then when there's a point where there's just one of us talking for a while, it will focus on the active speaker using the audio. And then if there's laughter or crosstalk, it'll show both of us on screen again. I now have a multi-cam look and I did it all with a single click here in Riverside. Now I can also expand all the tracks using this tool and you'll see all the portions of each track that are muted, they're kind of grayed out here. That's what Smart Mute did. That's just gonna get you cleaner audio across all your tracks. But if you ever need to adjust it, maybe remove a little more or bring something back that was muted, you can just drag those in and out points and then adjust your audio. Now, I also applied our brand and you can set the brand for your studio and that will live permanently until you change it. If you go to the brand tool here on the right hand side, you can add your logo, a background image that you want behind the video, even a color palette, and you can even add captions but only when there's certain aspect ratios. So here, when I go to nine by 16 and then add my brand, it will automatically add the caption. So I can switch the aspect ratio using this tool here. And now when I click apply brand, you'll see those animated captions, the background image, and our video gets formatted with rounded corners. So you can take some time, even add intro and outro video clips that you can apply whether you're just doing 16 by nine video only apply them on your shorts and reels. And that's gonna save you a ton of time in designing your video and making sure it looks just like your show. I'll go back to the 16 by nine version real quick. Now, whenever there was a screen share, like I showed you before, the Riverside editor actually formats it automatically. So you see the screen share, you can see both guests, or you can customize this layout. For every scene, which you'll see scenes denoted by the vertical lines down here in the timeline, I can roll my mouse over, go to layout, and choose what kind of layout I want. For sharing content, I can choose to have the screen share large, and I can choose what appears in which area. So I'll have the screen share big in the middle, and then me and my co-host are smaller circles. And I can even click the circle overlays and change the size of our overlays. There's lots of powerful layouts here. You also have solo speaker, one-on-one. -on -one, and when you click show all, you can see all the different layouts for sharing content. For instance, I can switch to the large picture in picture and screen share on the left and choose exactly the layout I want per scene. Then if you want a new scene, just click the new scene button here in the bottom left corner. That adds another scene here. And let's change the layout so we can see the difference. I'll go back to this side by side view, change it to the screen share in the middle. And now you see it goes to that picture in picture where we're on the right side. And once it crosses that new scene line there at the timeline, it'll go to this view where me and my co-host were on vertical videos screen share in the middle. Now, if you wanna make granular edits to your podcast, that's not a problem either. You get the transcript right here on the left side and I can just select text, click the trash can, and that's it. I've edited the video and audio. So you can edit via the text or you can also make cuts down here in the timeline using our split tool here. You can also just tap the letter S on your keyboard to make splits. And then you can delete and remove sections just by highlighting it and clicking the trash can down there. So edit via text, like you're editing a Word document, or edit via timeline if you're used to more traditional editors. And I love that I can search the transcript up here to jump to a specific point. Like I showed you before, every time we end our full episode, I say, see you next time. So I just search for the words next time, and it actually brought me right to the end of the full episode. Then everything afterwards is bonus content. So here at the end, I can split it again, delete everything after that point, and now I'm just left with the full episode content ready to export. But if you want to make even more engaging content, there's a few more tools available, like adding background music. 
I can click add music down here in the timeline or use the music tool here in the sidebar. I can upload some intro music directly from my computer or choose from one of the royalty free music clips here. And when I click the plus icon, that gets overlaid down in the timeline. Click the three dots and you can adjust the volume and fade in and fade out. And now I have some intro music. I can also add image overlays, both search for stock images or also upload images. And I've uploaded some slides here. I can click one, expand it to fill the frame and now I have image overlays. We also have video overlays. You can search for stock video or upload your own clips, and video overlays work just like the image overlays. Click one. If it's a video overlay, you can adjust the volume to mute it if you just want to use it like B-roll, fill the frame, and now we have video overlays all in the Riverside editor. We also have text overlays if you want to add speaker labels, chapter names, or maybe an episode title, and we even have AI-generated video so you can share a prompt or upload a still image and Riverside will generate AI B-roll from that image or your prompt. If you want to get an in-depth look at the AI generated video that we offer in Riverside, check out my video on it right up here. And those are all the tools you need to edit your podcast. If you want to make some more advanced changes to things like equalizer or volume adjustments per track, you can go over to the tracks tool, click any of the participants, and you can adjust the volume here, apply magic audio, or enable the EQ feature. Here you can choose from lots of different defaults. Maybe someone sounded a little muffled. Well, you can choose the muffle free setting. And you can also click the settings right here and open a graphical EQ. If you want to make specific frequency and decibel adjustments, you can apply that EQ and have a different one per track. You can also apply that eye contact using AI. And if their camera and microphone were a little out of sync due to their setup, you can adjust the lip sync right here per track. Then when you're ready, you can just go up to export and export up to 4K video and keep all your same edits and then export an MP3 audio so you can upload it to your podcast host. And that is simply the best way to edit your podcast. It's how I do it every week. And it's going to get you rolling in minutes rather than taking hours of editing in the middle of the night. Now, if you have any questions, leave comments below this video. I'll help you there. And don't forget to subscribe to the Riverside channel and hit that like button. I have lots of videos coming on multiple different setups. If you need a portable podcast setup, if you're looking to upgrade your studio, Lots of videos. I actually put a recent one I did on the best podcast mics of this year. You can check out that video right here. And if you're looking for that portable setup, maybe you're going to be traveling or you want to be able to record anywhere like a cafe or outside, check out my video on portable setups right up here. Thanks for watching. We can't wait to see what you create.